Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 20A. This is the first of three tutorials related to accounting changes and errors. This tutorial has three major learning objectives. The first will be to identify changes in accounting policy, changes in accounting estimates, and errors in different situations. Second will be to identify the necessary accounting treatment, i.e. is it retrospective, current year, or prospective in different situations. And third, to prepare any necessary journal entries for accounting adjustments applicable to current and or prior periods. This tutorial is based on the Holmes Limited example, and what we will be doing in this tutorial will be to prepare any adjusting entries for the items that you'll see come up. We'll assume that the books are open for 2021 and all previous years are closed. Uh, we'll ignore any income tax effects and assume that all amounts are considered material. All right, so let's deal with the first item. In this one, at the beginning of 2019, the company purchased a machine for $200,000 with a residual value of $25,000, and it had an estimated useful life of eight years. When you see this kind of information, you're probably going to have to calculate depreciation. Now, the bookkeeper used straight line depreciation, but did not deduct the residual value in determining the depreciation expense. And the depreciation expense for 2021 and all previous years have already been recorded. So what this means is that the depreciation in years 2019, 2020, and 2021 are all incorrect. So what we have here is an accounting error, and the treatment is retrospective because it covers more than the current period. So what we have to do first is determine what the correct depreciation was and the incorrect depreciation was. The calculated depreciation as done was $200,000 divided by eight years, right? So they did not deduct the residual. So the company was taking depreciation expense of $25,000 per year. What they should have done was deducted the residual value of $25,000, then divided by eight years. So they should have taken 21,875 depreciation. What that means is that the company was taking $3,125 of excess depreciation expense every year for three years. So we have to figure out how to adjust this amount. So what we'll do is look at how every year was impacted. So in 2019, what they did is took an expense of 25,000, it should have been 21,875 for a difference of 3,125. That means the depreciation expense is overstated by 3,125. The net income in 2019 is understated by 3,125. Remember, if your expenses are too high, your income is too low. And because net income is closed to retained earnings, then the retained earnings is understated by 3,125. Then we move over to 2020. Same problem. Expense 25,000. It should have been 21,875. So the expense is over by 31,25. The profits are under by 31,25. And the retained earnings, however, is under now by 6,250 because we have the previous understatement in retained earnings plus the current year. So the understatement of retained earnings has grown. And finally, in 2021 same problem expense was 25 it should have been 21875 so the expense is over and the net income would be understated however the books are still open here what this means is that there is no retained earnings impact on this this year because we can fix it and here's how we fix it our correcting entry on december 31st will be to adjust accumulated depreciation for three years worth so 3,125, that's the error, times three years, because in the data it says that the depreciation in 2021 was already recorded. If it was not recorded, then we would only need to adjust accumulated depreciation for two years worth. Then what we have here is a credit to retained earnings to bring it back up for the accumulated impact of the error for 2020 and 2021. Inclusive, so 6,250. That's the 3125 error times two prior years because the books are closed in those two years. And then we can fix this year's depreciation expense because it's still open. We can credit the depreciation expense and just adjust it by this year's error, 3125, and the books are still open, and that's it. Now, you don't necessarily have to put this kind of table together. If you understand what's going on, you can say, oh, okay, 
Current year books are still open, so I need to adjust this year's depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. You could do that as one entry. And then if you realize that the other two years impact was 3125 times two, then that is a retrospective adjustment to retain earnings for two years. Once you get good at this, you don't need to prepare all these kinds of tables, but if you're having trouble with them, it's a good idea to identify what the impact is in each year so that you can follow it through and make the correct adjustment. Okay, our next item. In 2021, the company changed its basis for inventory costing from weighted average to FIFO. The cumulative effect was to increase net income of prior years by 72000 and the company credited that cumulative effect to opening retained earnings. FIFO was used in calculating the net income for 2021. And the reason why they did that is because management believes the change will result in more relevant information. That's really the reason why you'd undergo that type of policy change. So what do you have? You have a change in accounting policy. The treatment is retrospective. However, no adjustment is required. The treatment's correct, and the adjustment was already made in 2021. So just because we introduce you to a potential error doesn't mean it needs to be adjusted. In this case, it's not an error. It's a change in accounting policy. Because the adjustment was made, and it was made correctly. So this one's an easy one. No adjustment required. In the third item... A review of the company's provision for uncollectible accounts during 2021 determined that 2.5% of sales is the appropriate amount of bad debt expense to be charged to operations rather than 2%. So they were using 2% before, 2.5% is more reasonable. The 2% was used for two previous years. Bad debt expense in 2019 was 38000 It was 47000 in 2020. And for 2021, the bad debt expense would have been 53000 under the old rate, and no entry has been made in 2021 for the bad debt expense. What this means is that we know what the bad debt expense was in two previous years. It has not been adjusted this year. So what do we have? We have a change in estimate that's prospective. We don't need to adjust for 2019 and 2020. We were using an estimate of 2% that was acceptable at the time. And then based on experience, it's determined that 2.5% is better. So we adjust only in the current year as a prospective treatment. So the new bad debt expense based on 2.5% of sales means that first we actually have to calculate the sales. In the problem, we don't know what the sales are. So the good thing about being given this 53000 in bad debt expense allows us to do a back calculation to determine the sales. Under the old method, if we take 53,000 divided by 2%, sales for 2021 had to be 2,650,000. Then we multiply by the revised rate of 2.5%, and that gives us a bad debt expense in this year, 2021, of 66,250. So the correcting entry at December 31st is simply to debit bad debt expense for 66,250 and credit allowance for doubtful accounts of 66250. So that's it for item three. All right, for item four, the company acquired land on January 1st, 2018 at a cost of 150000 But guess what? It was charged to automobiles, an error, and then has been depreciated on a straight line basis with a five-year estimated useful life and no residual value. So clearly this is an accounting error. The treatment is retrospective. Right? We have to make sure that we uh, determine what the prior year's adjustments are and then a current year, if any. And the depreciation was calculated based on 150000 over five years, so 30000 per year. The correct depreciation should be zero because land is not a depreciable asset, so we have a difference every year of 30000 so what we can do is put together a little table to see the impact every year. For 2018, the expense 30 should have been zero. Difference, of course, of 30. The expense is 30,000 over. The net income, 30,000 under. And therefore, retained earnings, 30,000 understated. Same impact in 2019, except now that the retained earnings is a cumulative understatement of 30 from 2018 plus 30 in 2019. And if we look at 2020, the same problem again, 30,000 expense when it should have been zero. So expenses are too high. The net income is too low. And the cumulative impact on retained earnings brings us to 90,000. Now we're in 2021. The same error occurs again. However, this time the books are still open. 
just by looking at this, you can probably tell that we can fix this in the current year. And then we'll have to do a retained earnings adjustment for the cumulative 90,000. So here's what it looks like. First, we have to move the 150,000 cost that was put into automobiles into land. So we will debit land for 150,000 and credit automobiles for 150,000. And then we will adjust accumulated depreciation for automobiles for, you know, if you want, if you're not sure, you can always leave this blank and do it at the end. But we're going to credit retained earnings for 90,000. That's the three years previous. 30,000 times three years prior. We will credit depreciation expense for the current year adjustment for 30,000, so that's one year, and the total is 120,000. That means the debit to accumulate depreciation is 120,000, which is basically your 30,000 per year times four years. And it's four years because that error was made, the depreciation adjustment was made in each of those years. So three prior, one current. All right, item five. At the year-end inventory count, so this would be in 2021, the auditor found some evidence of good that were shipped FOB destination, which were recorded as a sale. The selling price was 37000 and the cost was 22000 The goods were shipped on December 29th, 2021, and received by the customer on January 3rd, 2022. The company uses perpetual inventory and updates inventory and cost of goods sold when a sales transaction is recorded. Okay, here's the problem. We have an accounting error because the error is made in 2021. We can fix it in the current year. Now, the reason why it's an error is because right here, FOB destination. So what this means is that the revenue should not be recognized until it reaches its destination. If this was FOB shipping, then we would have no problem. But FOB destination means we have an issue. So what the company did is record revenue of 37,000, it should not have recorded any revenue. And of course, it matched the revenue recorded with cost of goods sold of 22,000. It shouldn't have been. So the difference here is just simply the gross profit on the sale of 15,000. So the revenue is overstated by 37, the cost of goods over by 22. The net income overstated, of course, by the gross profit. And because the net income is overstated, the retained earnings is overstated by 15,000. But again, we can fix this in the current year with a fairly simple adjustment. So on December 31st, we will debit sales for 37,000, credit accounts receivable for the same 37,000. We will debit inventory to put that item back into inventory and then credit cost of goods. And that error is fixed. Now for our last item on July 1st, 2020, the company expensed a three-year insurance policy for with a total premium of $7,200, and the policy expires on June 30th, 2023. So this is clearly an accounting error. They expensed the policy when they should have recorded as a prepaid. The calculated expense, what they did, is took an expense of $7,200. They should have taken $200 per month, right? So $7,200 on a 36-month policy. So what we'll need to do is figure out what the impact is on how many months and adjust accordingly. So we can set up a little table for this one again. What they did in 2020 is expense 7,200, but they should have expensed 1,200, which is $200 per month times six months from July 1st to December 31st inclusive. So they expensed 6,000 too much. The income is 6,000 too low and the retained earnings 6,000 too low. In 2021, they didn't expense any, they should have expensed $2,400, right? So 12 months worth. So in this case, the difference is $2,400 too low. So the expense is under by $2,400. And that income is $2,400 too high, but the books are still open. So we can fix this this year. So which means we have a current year impact and a prior year impact. Our journal entry is very simple. We have a $6,000 cumulative retained earnings adjustment that has to... Um, credited, so we're going to credit retained earnings for the over expense, right? They should have only expensed 1200, they expensed 7200. We're going to debit the uh, insurance expense this year for what should be, right, the 12 months this year. And when you make the debits equal credits, the adjustment to prepaid insurance is going to be a debit for the unexpired 
prepaid insurance. So there's 18 months remaining at $200. So that's 3,600. So there's a few ways you could do it. You could figure out how much is left. 18 months left times 200. So debit the insurance, the prepaid insurance, record this year's expense of 2,400. And then you could just plug the retained earnings for 6,000, which would be correct. And that's all there is to it. Okay. And now for some key points to remember. Changes in accounting policy must be accounted for retrospectively and in the current year. Changes in accounting estimates must be accounted for in the current year if the books are still open and prospectively. Accounting errors typically require adjustments to retain their earnings impacts for prior years and or to current years revenues and expenses if the books are still open. The key to these is to separate, we need to draw a timeline, separate prior years from current year, determine if any adjustment is required this year to fix something that can still be fixed, and the errors that were made in previous years, which are always going to be adjusted only to retained earnings to make up for what was done incorrectly previously. So this concludes tutorial 20A. You can proceed to tutorials 20B and C for more accounting changes and errors. We hope you found this useful.